This is the Atlantic story. The history of the Atlantic Refining Company, of its growth from a handful of oil marketing pioneers to an organization of more than 16,000 men and women. To the people who make up the Atlantic family, 260 means one thing. 260 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, the heart and home office of the Atlantic Refining Company. Here are made the decisions and policies which tie together Atlantic's widespread activities. As you drive down the highway, the familiar red, white, and blue Atlantic service station is the symbol of Atlantic to most of us. Did you ever wonder what lay behind that symbol, when Atlantic began, and how it has grown and prospered? The nucleus of Atlantic was formed in 1860, just one year after Colonel Edwin Drake drilled the first successful oil well in the world at Titusville, Pennsylvania. In that year, the petroleum export firm of Warden, Frew and Company opened for business in Philadelphia. Six years later, Warden, Frew and Company merged with Peter Wright and Sons and became the Atlantic Petroleum Storage Company. This company had its docks and wharves in that part of Philadelphia known as Point Breeze, the site of our present day Philadelphia refinery. The beginnings of this refinery were made in 1870 when the Atlantic Petroleum Storage Company became the Atlantic Refining Company with manufacturing facilities of 3,000 barrels of oil per day. In 1874, Atlantic, keeping its own name, became part of the growing Standard Oil Organization. After 1874, Atlantic expanded rapidly. It purchased small refineries at Pittsburgh and Franklin, Pennsylvania, practically next door to the oil fields. We also bought the Excelsior Works and Belmont Refinery adjoining our property at Point Breeze. It became common in the 1890s to see 20 or more sailing ships at Atlantic's wharves loading barrels of refined oil bound for foreign markets all over the world. In the early 1900s, although the major product was kerosene, Atlantic introduced and pioneered new ones. Paraffin wax for household use was first placed on the market. During this early period in Atlantic's history, horse-drawn wagons were the means of transporting product. In 1911, Atlantic became independent again when the Standard Oil Trust was dissolved. At this time, Atlantic faced some challenging problems. It owned three refineries, yet had no production of its own, not a single oil well. Transportation was needed. It had neither pipelines nor tankers. And with 60% of its sales foreign, it had no foreign marketing organization. Efficiency in refining was the company's greatest asset, making it possible to supply the foreign markets while improving its position at home. Then, in 1914, mass production of the automobile became a reality. Gasoline instead of kerosene became our major product, and Atlantic adapted its marketing program to meet this change. It built the first drive-in service station in the east in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1915. The success of this type of marketing was immediate, and other companies soon followed Atlantic. In keeping with the time, Atlantic experimented with motor truck deliveries and built its own trucks in the Philadelphia refinery machine shop. A step toward greater integration was taken when Atlantic began operating its own oil wells. A small beginning had been made in Kentucky in 1916, but the real beginning was in central Texas in 1919. Expanding its search for oil, the company extended its drilling operations into Kansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and Central and South America. Atlantic temporarily stopped its territory sales expansion with our entrance into World War I. To help the Allies achieve air supremacy, Atlantic developed and produced every gallon of a special type high-octane aviation fuel. By the end of the war, the Philadelphia refinery had increased its capacity to over 40,000 barrels a day. Existing outlets controlled by the company could absorb only a small portion of that amount, so foreign and domestic markets had to be expanded. 
In the spring of 1919, an office was opened in Paris, France. Soon others followed in Belgium, Holland, Germany, Italy, and Africa. In the Western Hemisphere, Brazil and Argentina. Since crude oil was needed in large quantities to make products to supply these markets, it proved more economical to consolidate through the sale of its Eastern Hemisphere marketing territories in 1954. Brazil now became Atlantic's major foreign market, with hundreds of modern Atlantic service stations selling the same familiar Atlantic quality products. In domestic marketing, the main problem after World War I was opening up new territories. The company had adequate coverage in its traditional area, Pennsylvania and Delaware, but this area had to be extended. A natural starting point was New England, for under the old standard regime, Atlantic had supplied the gasoline marketed by Standard Oil Company of New York in this area. A water terminal was opened at Fall River, Massachusetts, and properties acquired with railroad facilities at Worcester, Hartford, Springfield, and New Haven. Service stations were built in each of these cities where Atlantic had storage. With this as a nucleus, expansion through the territory was rapid. Moving into the South Atlantic states was on a different basis. Maryland and Virginia could be profitably served out of Philadelphia, but the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida were too far away. To serve this area, a refinery was built at Brunswick, Georgia in 1921. Then sales efforts were begun throughout the territory. In the late 1920s, we extended operations into New York and New Jersey. In 1937, a new refinery was constructed at Port Arthur, Texas, near the oil fields. This made it possible to close the smaller refineries at Pittsburgh and Franklin, Pennsylvania, as well as our refinery at Brunswick, Georgia. In 1941, Atlantic went to war for the second time, supplying products, technical experience, and manpower. Two huge catalytic cracking units were constructed at Philadelphia and at Port Arthur. These giant cats produced enough 100-octane aviation gasoline to keep 370 B-29s in the air, night and day. Atlantic's growth since World War II has been unprecedented. Capital expenditures have amounted to more than $500 million, an amount almost one and a half times the value of all properties, plant and equipment owned at the beginning of the period. Today, Atlantic is engaged in all branches of the petroleum business, acquisition and development of oil gas lands, production, transportation, and the refining of crude oil, its products and derivatives, and the transportation and marketing of petroleum products. Today, Atlantic owns and operates almost 4,000 producing wells and has millions of acres of land under lease for production and exploration in the United States and Canada, Venezuela, Cuba, and Guatemala. For years, Atlantic has been operating geophysical crews in all parts of the United States and Canada, from the desert ranges of West Texas to the northern fields of Saskatchewan. Exploration parties and seismograph crews are continually combing the area searching for producing wells. In the United States alone, we have nearly four million acres of potential oil lands under lease in 15 states, with additional millions of acres under reservation in Canada and Venezuela. To increase oil recovery at the wells, Atlantic pioneered again and was the first company to use high pressure gas injection into underground reservoirs. But finding crude oil is only the beginning. It must be moved to refineries and from refineries to consumers. In order to transport this crude oil economically, seagoing tankers were necessary. In 1916, the H.C. Folger and the J.W. Van Dyke were acquired. This was the beginning of a fleet of 30 tankers, 
including a number of super tankers owned and under long-term contracts. Atlantic engineered the first all-welded, self-propelled ship that proved so successful that it paved the way for the mass building of welded ships during the Second World War. In addition, Atlantic engineered and designed the first high-pressure, high-temperature steam turbine-driven tanker, a development later adapted by the United States Navy. Atlantic continued to pioneer, being the first to install radar on a commercial tanker, as well as the first to make use of very high-frequency radio telephone. Early in the 1950s, Atlantic built and launched four of the largest tankers in the world. Among them, the Atlantic Seaman, named for the heroic men who man her ships. In addition to a tanker fleet, pipelines were needed to economically transport the finished products from our refineries. In 1919, Atlantic began construction of its pipelines. The Atlantic Pipeline Company, a subsidiary, now operates over 3,300 miles of pipeline in Texas, New Mexico, and Louisiana. About a thousand miles of pipeline carry finished petroleum products to western Pennsylvania and northern New York State. Today, Atlantic has a fleet of close to 500 modern tank trucks. Many of these operate from the Belmont Terminal in Philadelphia, the largest petroleum truck terminal in the world. With improved transportation facilities and increased production, refinery expansion proceeded. Today, our Philadelphia refinery sprawls over more than 600 acres along the Schuylkill River and has a capacity to process 148,000 barrels of crude oil a day. New units at the Philadelphia refinery include a catalytic reforming unit. This new reforming process developed by Atlantic's research department produces high yields of high octane gasoline at low cost. A second fluid catalytic cracking unit and a modern crude distilling tower started operation during 1954. In addition to a new ammonia plant, an alkylation unit was built to manufacture components for high quality gasoline. At our Texas refinery, a new detergent alkylate plant was completed in 1953 along with a new catalytic reforming unit. With this new construction at both refineries, our capacity to manufacture was increased by 60%. Increased production calls for aggressive research. In Dallas, research on petroleum production is conducted near the southwest oil fields. In Philadelphia, the main research center aims its efforts at improving refining methods and developing new and improved petroleum products and the finding of new uses for the products of the company. Atlantic pioneered and was the first petroleum company to manufacture modern chemical detergents. The first to use atomic energy in petroleum research and the first to develop detergent motor oils. Atlantic's research has continually enabled the company to lead the field in top quality products. 1953 saw the unveiling of the new Atlantic Premium Motor Oil and Atlantic Premium Gasoline. The familiar red, white, and blue Atlantic stations from New Hampshire to Florida continue as a symbol of top quality petroleum products and courteous service. These achievements and many more do not mark the end of the Atlantic story. For the past is a prologue for the future. As we have grown and expanded to meet the needs of the past, so will we continue to expand to meet the needs of the future. No one can predict the future, but it is certain that the men and women who make up Atlantic today have the opportunity to achieve many things undreamed of by those who contributed to Atlantic's distinguished past. <laughs>